but it's big. The dinghy is gone. Land ho! I'm Kate, and this is Curtis. This is our moving home sweet Ruka. One year ago, we quit our jobs, bought a boat, and plan on sailing around the world without going through the canal. You heard me right. Cape Horn and the Cape of Good Hope. Click subscribe and come along for the ride. We left Annapolis bound for the Bahamas just a few long days ago, and now it was finally warming up. As night was settling in, we heard a noise near the cockpit and realized we forgot about something. But it's big. Okay. Get your workout in, babe. There you go. See it? Follow the line. Oh! Kind of looks like a fish. doing down there? Yeah? That Curtis just caught. Is this a sweet Ruka recipe? I guess. Look at how thick that one is. Mm. It smells fishy. All you Nothing. need is a little olive oil, salt, pepper. Nothing so. like mahi mahi at nine knots. Curtis's favorite way to eat fish. Fresh, fried in olive oil. Oh yeah. And while going nine knots. Oh, mahi steaks. And he was a good fight too. Yeah, he was. The accidental night catch was exactly what we needed to boost our spirits. Our appetites were back in full swing and we were getting antsy to reach our final destination. Hey Kate, look over here. Hey! Say hi to everyone at home. Hi. Kate is digging for groceries. I'm digging for groceries. <laughs> what, what do you got? What are you looking for? Marinara sauce. Mm. It is warm enough to not have pants on or shirts on. Finally, we'll go outside here. You guys can check it out. See, we are safety first out here. Got our life jackets and harnesses. We are just north of the Bahama Banks. We're going to turn around Man of War Key about midnight tonight and then uh, continue heading south and we are going to check in at Eleuthera. You know, really we've been kind of hitting the sailing hard for six days. As you can tell, I haven't shaved. We did take some showers today off the back of the boat, which was nice. Well, I guess we'll give you a quick tour of the boat and how we convert it from kind of coastal mode to offshore mode. So the first thing you'll see is over here. The dinghy is gone. Well, where'd it go? It went up there on the front. The reason why we do that and bring it off of there and put it up there is to have more clearance back here for waves. An example is we actually had two waves land in the cockpit on this trip. It can get pretty big out there and we don't want a wave to break into the dinghy which would then collapse the davits and then it would be just a whole big problem. So we tie them down really tight up front. The dinghy motor and the dinghy fuel as you can see are on the back. Other than moving some things around downstairs you could see Kate was uh, jumping over a whole pile of stuff uh, to be able to get some food out. The reason is we put all of our extra sails and all of our extra weight down near the center of the boat. That stops the boat from pitching forward and back and side to side uh, a little bit more. So that kind of centralizes weight a little bit better. Uh, we needed it on the first night. We knew the weather was going to be a little bit gnarly. It was supposed to blow into the 20s for our Gulf Stream crossing and it ended up blowing into the 30s and really up to 35. Here we are doing between seven and eight knots, six high sixes, kind of surfs up into the nines or tens maybe. Right there you can see is 
Great Abaco, that's where we are. And our line is trending right on the outside of it. Back to Kate cooking. Roxy sleeping. We're getting better at our internet satellite comms. Kate's making some gnocchi. Yeah, frozen. Nice. But it's still good. You're such a nerd. <laughs> we in the Bahamas! She's amped. It's warm, sitting in the sun. We're like a few hours from our first anchorage and we're super excited to just chill after months and months and months of preparation. We had some fun along the way, but hopefully we can have a little more fun and a little less work. Hopefully. Hopefully. Not gonna work. on the fiberglass. There we go. <laughs> the good part is we have shorts on. Woo! Swimsuit, shorts, whatever. Oh, there's Roxy! And there's Roxy. Hi, buddy! Well, coming up to say hi. Hello. Yeah, happy Roxy! What do you, what do you want? So are we gonna get some uh, rum cake, babe? Heck yeah. Maybe rum cock fritters? Yeah. Maybe. Swimming. Snorkeling. Snorkeling. Some scuba, are made of. scuba diving. Howdy. We're in the Bahamas. Land ho! <laughs> we have land back there. Kate doesn't want to talk. I already talked. <laughs> so we are just coming up on Eleuthera. Tell us how your first Gulfstream crossing was. I spent most of the night puking. <laughs> and also it was like giant waves just cracked off upwind in 35 knot winds so you know we crossed at a time where we weren't expecting quite that much wind and Roxy went to the bathroom on the boat. Tell us more about that Kate. How has it been sailing with Roxy the dog um, in her first like truly long passage? It's been better than I thought. She's a pretty understanding dog. She had a hard time like balancing herself and she couldn't even just like lay down because her body would roll and she couldn't figure out how to get settled. But now she's got that pretty much dialed in. She knows, you know, if the boat's healing this way, if I lean myself up against a crevice, I'm probably going to stay in a pretty good spot, even in her bed or not in her bed. So keep our fingers crossed that she keeps doing a good job. And right now she's in good spirits, but exhausted. So she's passed out, her tongue's hanging out. <laughs> She'll be so much happier when she's running on these Bahamian beaches and warm water sun beating down but definitely looking forward to getting a good night's sleep at anchor so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna send kate up to the bow and i'm gonna ask her questions and she's gonna yell at me but i'm probably what? gonna yell back at her what <laughs> and then we're gonna get really mad at each other but we're gonna make it through this little cut without hitting anything that if you guys don't know this at home is how cruising really works we're gonna do a little bit of navigation through this little cut over here to get some footage for you guys to cut as we are uh, going through but as that being our first passage we might be focusing more on navigation this time around we made it we reached our final destination of eleuthera bahamas now we were in the land of the shallows needing to pay attention to sandy banks and rocks scattered about our chosen entrance to eleuthera was the narrow passage between egg and little egg islands i know it's nothing new it's so good to see you We do this every day And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight Through the night Oh my god, 
God, look at this water. I don't know if you can even tell on the camera. Roxy's happy. <laughs> yeah. Sunset is just beautiful, Kate, isn't it? I can see it on your face. <laughs> what do you think, Roxy? Oh, Rax has got sunset on her face too. Just sitting in a little chair like a little person. Over here at Meeks Island in Aloof. Boat's got sunset on it too. Bye, son. <coughs> Swimsuits, finally. The next morning, we dive on our anchor, climb the rig, and explore the small island of Meeks on our paddle boards. We aren't quite ready for civilization yet. Time to relax after a very rewarding passage. in there pretty good, huh? The anchor was set and Roxy got to have a much needed swim. Now time to act like a pirate and climb the rig to search the surrounding areas from above. There's Sweet Ruka down below. You can see our beautiful shadow in the bottom of the Bahamas. And your blood is in the water as you go straight through my heart. Water like a fish. We went up the rig for a bird's eye view. Now it was time to get on our feet, er, paddle our way around the island. How it 
Dying to know 